Good evening to you. And welcome, Walnut UMC and West Covina UMC. I wish we would do this kinds of thing a little more often, huh? What do you think? We should bring our people together. Let them see who they are and celebrate, you know, um, our common ministry. I want to welcome you. This is, this is just fantastic. Um, I don't think there is any housekeeping things to do. Um, I'm sure we all have Good Friday services tomorrow. Uh, ours is at seven here. What is yours? Seven. Seven. seven? Yeah, there we go. So if you're running around, need some time out, that's the place to go and uh, encounter the Holy One before the Good Friday services, okay? So if you're able, I want to invite you to stand, either in body or in spirit, and uh, <clears throat> we will sing this wonderful hymn, 290. Here's a call to worship. The table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. The Lord calls us to this supper of remembrance. As we break the bread and share the cup, but we will never forget Christ's example.
Please be seated. Let us join together in our call to confession. It's printed in your bulletin and on the screen as well. Let us pray together. Loving Christ, on that night long ago, you knew that your hour had come. You knew full well what lay ahead of you. Your disciples loved you and followed you, but they had also failed you. They would fail you yet again that night, and one would betray you. Yet you washed their feet as a servant would, even the feet of your betrayer. We have also loved you and followed you. We have also failed you, and we cannot comprehend the love that you show us, the love that is our example, the love that tells us to do all you have done for us. May we be like you, Master, servants of all. May all see how we long to be your faithful disciples. May all see how we love each other, just as you have loved us. In your holy name we pray, amen. Now the Son of Man, the one who loves us is glorified. In him, God is also glorified. The one who loves us gives us a new commandment to love one another. As the Lord has loved us, you are to love each other, he said. Let all see that love among us and glorify God. Let all see how we belong to Christ. Amen. I was guilty with nothing to say And they were coming to take me away And a voice from heaven was heard that said Let him go and take me instead Oh, I should have been crucified I should have suffered and died I should have hung on the cross in this grace but Jesus, God's Son, took my place. The crown of thorn, the spear in his side, and the pain should have been mine. Those rusty nails were meant for me yet Christ took them and let me go free oh I should have been crucified I should have suffered and died I should have hung on the cross in this grace but Jesus God's son took my place but Jesus God's son took my place here we go Good evening. 
I'll be reading the scripture readings for this evening, which is in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. This is John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. And it is written as so. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, he put on his robe and he had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good evening. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Pastor David, for the invite. And if I'm correct, next year we are at Walnut. That means that we get a slight break. <clears throat> you know, it's natural for us to want to be first. And I believe that that is so American that it hurts. Who among us sets as their goal to be 32nd in sales? or number 216, and a graduating class of 218? Or who wants to be number two in a singles tennis match? Or who wants to be 48th in a bridge tournament? To be number one is what it's all about. Also, we have a tendency to want to be great. Who among us would want our epitaph to say, he or she was known primarily for their insignificance. <laughs> Basically, of no account. Of all persons, we could say that this person was essentially inconsequential. Now, of course not. We may differ in what we wish to excel, or in what area we would like to be significant, but all of us have an ambition 
toward greatness. I'm reminded of the story of the Roman Catholic monastic orders who were vying with each other to determine which was the greatest. The Dominican monk said, we are the quietest and most contemplative. The Franciscans said, we are the most sacrificing when it comes to worldly things. The Benedictines said, we are the most disciplined and worshipful of all. The final order of monks came forward and said, we lead the rest of you in being the humblest. <laughs> Everyone desires to be significant, to be number one, to be great. A well-known psychiatrist once noted that our desire for prominence and significance is our most insistent drive, even more urgent than the need for sex. Now, Jesus does not deny that drive in us. Neither does Jesus anywhere tell us to put a lid on it. Instead, Jesus commands us to seek the right form of greatness. We are to be significant in the kingdom of God and not in ours. And to show us what that means, Jesus didn't just talk about it. He acted it out. Jesus did a drama and used as his props a towel and a basin. Now, I might add that the towel and the basin will be leftovers by design when this drama is through. The Bible says something like this. Jesus, knowing that all things were in his hands and that he was from God and would go to God, stripped and knelt down and washed the dusty feet of his disciples. It was too much. Their mouths must have been opened wide in astonishment. Here was their Lord doing such a menial job that they themselves had neglected or refused to do for each other. It was a job that a slave would do for a wealthy person's guests. Coming in from the streets, guests had their feet caked with mud and covered with dust. They needed cleaning. And it was the kind of courteous and thing to do. But the disciples were busy arguing among themselves. So the humble chore didn't get done. Do you know what they were fussing about on the night before Jesus was crucified? They were arguing about who was going to be first? Who would sit at Jesus' right hand and who at his left hand in the kingdom? So Jesus showed them what being tops in God's kingdom required. A life on your knees, a life of humble service to others. And here's where the leftovers come in. After Jesus had washed their feet, it says that he laid the towel and the basin aside. Why? Because they were left over for them and for us to use. Listen, Jesus said, do you see what I did? I, your Lord and Master, washed your feet. You go and do likewise. Now, some have called this the third sacrament, like the supper of bread and wine, like the ceremony of water in baptism. A towel and a basin is a sign of serving, just as Christ served. So what's the message? 
First, our model is and should be Jesus. Now, it was not beneath him to serve. In fact, that's who Jesus was and is. So whenever you feel proud and too good to get your hands dirty for others, set this image of Jesus before your eyes. See Jesus washing your feet. See Jesus spread eagle on a cross, just like a common thief and murderer and slave for you, for you. Whenever you want to lord it over others, your grand accomplishments and your boasting, then in your mind's eye, see Jesus with that towel down on his knees. Anytime you begin to think of yourself as above others or socially prominent, remember our Lord's measure. Then hear in your inner ear the sounds of splashing water. I always find the old hymns, for me, always puts it so well. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain, I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Secondly, we know what true greatness is. It's not ruling over others. It's serving them. It's not amassing wealth or political power. Greatness is not only social success, not even academic achievement. To be great is to harness achievement, but to do so in order to serve others. Sometimes even the world that we live in today understands this. According to historians, the Crimean War was one of the most important wars in the world. When you read about it, you can almost hear the sabers rattling, the orders being given and dispatched by generals and statesmen, the charge of the Light Brigade. However, during this important time, led by important people, there was a woman going around the barracks with a candle or a lantern in hand, trying to alleviate suffering, building up morale, binding up wounds. That woman's name was Florence Nightingale. The world doesn't even remember much about the Crimean War, let alone those who wore the gold braids but there's hardly a soul that hasn't heard of that serving woman. She is buried in the croft at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, where kings and queens are buried. And there's a statue of her there showing her putting a bandage on a wounded soldier. Above are the dates of her birth and death. And it says, blessed are the merciful. Or perhaps you know that some years ago in France, the school children were asked to name the greatest French person in history. Whom did they select? Napoleon, who sent legions of men to their death for his glory? No. They passed him up and placed the crown of greatness on Louis Pasteur, the little man who never lived for greatness at all, but for service. Have you ever wondered why we hail a person like Albert Schweitzer, a man who fascinates 
and rebukes our well-fed, self-seeking world? Or there's Mother Teresa, who gave herself to the very least of those in India. Or Martin Luther King, who was a drum major for justice and for the poor. It's not that these people were perfect. It's because, whether we know it or not, they were applying in their lives the standards of Christ. Someone has said, the only award for greatness that Christ honors is a distinguished service cross. It is in giving yourself away that you find yourself. Catherine Marshall in her book, A Closer Walk, makes this observation. When Jesus wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, Simon Peter objected that this was the, beneath the dignity of the master. We, the disciples, are to be servants. And I want to insist along with Peter. But Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. This is stunning and stupendous. Unless I can believe in this much love for me, unless I can and will accept him with faith as my servant as well as my God, unless I truly know that it's my good he seeks, not his glory, then I cannot have his companionship. What an amazing revelation. But whether the world sees it or not, we in the church must see it. There was Jesus going off to the cross alone, leaving a towel and a basin in the upper room. Jesus expects us to pick it up. By doing so, we will show our love for one another and that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. May God grant us the desire and the power to do so. To the glory of God. Amen. I invite you to open your hymnals to page 13, and we will join together in our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing to give you thanks to you, O God. You created the world and all that is in it, and all life shouts your praise. You provide us with the resources of life to thrive, to prosper, and each bit of life is precious to you. And so, with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy.
holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By his example, you show us how to extend extreme hospitality, to reach out to others and to love one another as you have loved us. Through him, you call us to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set free all who are oppressed. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks to you, O God, and he offered it to each of his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Each time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks to you, O God, and he offered it to each of his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of christ that we may be for the world the body of christ redeemed by his blood through this through the spirit make us one with christ one with each other one in ministry to all the world through your son jesus christ with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the meal that Jesus has prepared for all of us, any of us. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to the table of Christ. So let's taste and see that the Lord is good. So let, we'll have two stations, one here, one here. Jim, uh, maybe this you want to join him?
Let us pray. That first Thursday was an ominous night. But you spoke very gently to his disciples. You left a beautiful lesson to follow your teaching, to love the world you loved, to care for the world you cared so much. Thank you for reminding us once again this day night, that we are loved beyond our words and tell. Thank you for touching our hearts, transforming our lives, so that we can be your disciples today, tomorrow, and all the days ahead of us. Thank you, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Brenda will lead us in prayer and just intercession this morning. Amen. Amen. May we bow our heads or lift our faces to the sky or to the ceiling as I use this opportunity to lift our prayers of intercession. O oh God most high, on this night we remember Jesus humbly washing the feet of his disciples, has set an example for us, help us to follow him. We pray for the church and for all who serve others, especially those in most need. Jesus has set an example for us, help us to follow him. We pray for peace among nations and religions and peace among people. We pray for those who suffer because of hatred and hard-heartedness. We pray for those who are injured by the acts of violence or natural disaster. We pray for those who are sick or dying, for those who are frightened or distraught. Jesus has set an example for us. 